Welcome back to the channel guys, today I'm out again, more mesh experiments, out on the e-bike today and um, yeah, just out on this nice canal in between Hartford and Ware, well actually I'm almost at Ware. What's funny is Chris who we were talking to in the last video just pinged me a message, right now he is in Welling Garden City which is about 12 kilometres from here and I've just received the message. So the sirens aren't after me on the e-bike, let's just have a look at this quickly. So this is a message that he sent me first of all, it's basically um, I'm going over town to see what happens. So that was 1.11, 10 minutes ago, um, and I've kind of had to get all my prep together before I've started filming. But I thought I'd share this because it's quite interesting. Um, so if we go back to my main screen, you can see that we are, um, where's, where's Chris here? So Chris is sort of 12.5 kilometers away um, from me. So he's basically like three towns away, something like that. So he goes like well in, um, then you've got Hartford and then you've got Ware if you're sort of travelling in that direction. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting. My home station is 5.1 kilometres away, you can see here these are my two home ones. Um, but yeah, that's quite interesting that, isn't it? Now, he's actually kind of going to be going around doing some more tests in the Welling Garden City area. So we'll, um, we'll catch up and see you know, later on. I haven't had a beacon for him for a little while, seven minutes ago. Um, but anyway, just back to those messages quickly. So you see, he sent me one and I sent one back. I didn't get a delivery report, which seems to be a bit of a trend with this stuff. Um, you know, as we've seen in the last video. Um, and he's also sent the message again because he didn't get the reply. So, you know, messaging, again, a bit flaky, but it is kind of working. What's cool though is when he actually sent me the message, this was in my pocket. So I was just literally just driving to get some, or, or driving, um, kind of cruising to get some, I'm not even pedalling, cruising to get some, um, get some lunch. And um, this little message pops up. So that's pretty, pretty cool, isn't it? Um, it does work so well. Now this is kind of the benefit of 868 megahertz is because you don't need much of an antenna. The antennas are quite small. Um, this definitely wouldn't be working on lower frequencies in your pocket, which is kind of probably why mobile phones and everything use, you know, those higher frequencies. It's pretty cool to see that if you actually use this stuff, it does work. Um, so anyway, let's jump back into the uh, Mesh-tastic app again. I want to show you some other things. So you can see here a couple of stations. See this Hartford Omni, this is my home station. So I'm going to just do a trace route on that. Um, and we should get that back fairly quickly. Who's that? I think that might be some, someone messaging on MQTT, uh, that mobile one station. So I'm getting MQTT feed into this as well. Um, which is which is pretty cool. There's no real way of knowing whether that is MQTT or if that's local really, but I'm presuming it is. I've seen Mob 1 before. So yeah, again, no trace route on there. Let me just try doing another trace route on it because I did get a trace route um, before. So I just want to show you kind of, you know, the actual process completely. Um, it's not going to do it now for the video, is it at all? Might just have to wait a second. Right, here we go. So we've got a trace route. So Andy going away for pizza. <laughs> um, my status is in there. So what that's doing is that's going from me, standing by the canal, to Hartford East Link, which is my Yagi, which is actually pointing this way. So that's no surprise. Um, and then to my Omni, which is basically what we've pinged. Yeah, so that's right. Um, so yeah, that was just sort of working it out. So the Omni and the Yagi are on the same pole. Um, so it's kind of gone from one to the other and hit hit that. So it would be better to just kind of obviously ping, you know, the Yagi directly, um, Hartford East Link. So if we just ping that, I would expect that to probably come back, come back pretty quick. Um, come on. Um, yeah, so no trace route back on there. Not as yet, anyway. What's interesting though, as well, here, look, this signal here from the Omni is actually 120 RSSI now. So I wonder if that's God, full of sound effects today, guys, isn't it? Anyway, right, you get the idea, you get the gist. Anyway, I'm going to carry on, get some grub. Okay, here's the afternoon. How's a pizza? Didn't go through. Going over town. Are you getting pizza pie? It was from down the road, connected to Paul. And the rest of them were all through the town, apart from here at the bottom, back home now. And that's received. So, uh, 
So yeah, that's the uh, result of that one. So I think Chris was running into the classic antenna problem on his Helltech whilst he was kind of out and about in the town. He couldn't really receive a lot. And I think it's due to these antennas, basically. I, you know, I know some of you have had good results with these antennas, but I think if you're in a good position and, and everything else is, and everything's going the right way, these probably just kind of work. But we know for a fact that these are a little bit down on these antennas so ben from the discord and who also runs experimental engineering website um i'll leave a link to the website below he sourced managed to source a few of these there's quite interesting antennas so they kind of look like they shouldn't work but they do work pretty well okay look it's not an alternative for like using a whip antenna or anything like that like something decent i've got some other ones you know knocking around here like one of these ones this sort of thing um but there's a there's quite a raft of antennas about at the moment because obviously helium has started to go a bit kind of um peaked on so um there's quite a lot of these um lower uh, helium hnt minor antennas around so there's also x-ray mark from the discord he has managed to strike up a deal with um, mcgill microwave antennas so um, you know, join the Discord. There's, there's lots of links in the in the uh, in the pinned section of the Mesh Tastic channel of my Discord, which will give you discounts to different antennas. Paradise also have some discounts as well, but it's quite um, the prices I think on their website are very similar to the um, to the Amazon prices. So anyway, make your own mind up where you want to get these from. There's quite a lot of different antennas around at the moment, um, going a bit cheaper. And Patrick from Paradise sent me a couple of these these Yagi antennas, which I'm actually a big fan of the 12.5 dbi gain one you have to obviously watch your power because it's the irradiated power um can't go over 500 milliwatts so you have to adjust your tx power on that but the point is directional antennas work amazingly well like this massive great 433 megahertz yagi in the corner which i'm going to try on the 70 sems band for this stuff so what i'm going to start to do next is, is start optimizing our mesh we've got a mesh now and it's got about 13 to 15 nodes on at any one time um, spread over maybe I don't know like 10 kilometers or 13 kilometers something like that um, so it's getting quite busy and there's quite a lot of activity and we're starting to see um, yeah, you know it, it's starting to get a bit more congested than I first originally thought it would <laughs> I didn't realize there was going to be so many so many stations popping up in this area so yeah we're gonna to have to start thinking about how we kind of move forward and how we kind of minimize um, you know traffic and airtime to try and you know make make this kind of a lot more efficient and it's a really good you know it's a really good problem to have because we get to see exactly how this stuff works, you know, when there's a lot of lot of devices in an area. Um, you know, we're quite lucky here. Yeah? I know there's some of you out there going, oh, I dream to have like, you know, you know, just one other person or one other node around. You know, trust me, it will happen at some point. Um, you will end up with more, a lot more traffic in your area. The way this is going, it's 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 blowing big time. So yeah, the biggest problem is he's trying to get hold of the um the Helltech nodes. And there's obviously other ones out there like the T Echoes as well, but you know, they're selling they're sold out. So um, um, we've got Chinese New Year as well happening, so things are going to slow down a little bit. Um, but just keep an eye. I'm going to keep you up to date and you know keep posting links to where you can get these things from. And I still think after trying them all, apart from the racks, I haven't tried those yet. Um, I still think the Helltech is just a great solution. I mean, look at that; it's just brilliant. It's got a little battery on the back, um, and this obviously the cases are even more hard to come by um, than the actual devices themselves. But I think the Helltech is still a great node, despite trying all. Of them. T Echo slightly, you know, will have the edge um, on the receiver a little bit, but the Helltech is a staple. And if anyone wants to know what the battery is, that's the battery. Um, you can get these on Amazon. They're just like, um, well, I'll leave a link to these as well. Um, quite easy to sort of set up. Um, I've actually kind of take this connection over the top. This is soldered on. You know, it's never a great idea to solder onto batteries like this, but if you are quick with a very, very hot iron, you can get in and out very quickly and get it done. But these were absolutely brilliantly on these devices. Anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed this one. Happy meshing, and I'll catch you next time.